Good evening. According to newly obtained leaked audio from inside of the White House, it shows that the Department of Justice is not only well aware that many Americans who hold religious convictions, they believe that using fetal cells in vaccine development is evil, but also the federal government is well aware that according to the law, they must grant these people religious exemptions. Now, that is of course what they're saying behind closed doors. However, publicly, it's a much different story. For instance, just yesterday during a CNN presidential town hall, when Joe Biden was asked whether police officers as well as first responders should be fired, whether they should lose their jobs if they fail to take the vaccine, he simply answered yes. And of course, that's not only police officers and first responders who are across this country at risk of losing their jobs. In fact, we here at the Epic Times, we actually combed through the data that came out of the US military, and we found that there are still hundreds of thousands of American military troops who remain unvaccinated, even as the mandatory vaccine deadline is looming close ahead. Let's go through it all together. This is your daily Facts Matter update, and I'm your host, Roman, from the Epic Times. And now let's begin today's discussion by talking about the vaccine mandate. And to start with, I would like to compare what the White House is saying publicly with what they are saying privately behind closed doors. Although you might say, hold on a second, Roman, how do we know what they're saying behind closed doors? And that is a great question because normally we don't. However, due to the work of Jack Posobiec, who is, by the way, a great journalist, and I would highly recommend that you follow his podcast over at humanevents.com, and he was able to get his hands on a leaked audio recording of a meeting between White House officials as well as an attorney from the Department of Justice. And during that meeting, the attorney for the DOJ, he outlined to the White House how they can expect Americans with religious beliefs to try and get an exemption from the vaccine mandate. Take a listen. Society is representing a bunch of doctors and nurses who claim that they would sin gravely if they acted in cooperation with the evil of abortion. How would they be doing so? The claim is that all three of the current vaccines either have fetal cells that were that were obtained by abortions in the vaccine itself, or in the case of Pfizer and Moderna, that those vaccines were tested using fetal cells that had been aborted. And even the connection to the previous testing makes them cooperative with evil in a way that their religion prohibits. Now, just to pause here for a quick moment, what the lawyer in this leaked audio is referring to is something that we've discussed before in this program. The fact that the COVID vaccines, in one way, shape, form, or other, either used or use cell lines that came from aborted fetuses. Now, to be specific, the mRNA vaccines, meaning the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, they used these aborted fetal cell lines during the testing of their vaccines. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine, on the other hand, they actually have some of these cells actually inside of the vaccine itself. And due to these two facts, many Americans who hold pro-life views, as well as religious beliefs, they think that this is evil. They categorically think that this is evil and they want nothing to do with it. And as the audio plays itself out, the attorney for the Department of Justice, he concedes that there is not much that the government can do to compel such people to get the shot. Listen. I don't want to say anything too categorical, but I believe that when this claim will be very difficult for agencies to successfully claim that that's either insincere or non-religious, even if it is, even if we know that many of those claims are not sincere or are sincere but not religious. This is the most common claim you're going to confront, probably. Now, I just want to pause here for a moment as well and really consider something. In that recording, the lawyer for the Department of Justice, he said rather firmly that sometimes they know that the individual's claim is not sincere. However, that brings up a very important question, which is who actually has the right and the determination to decide whether you legitimately hold a sincere religious belief? Because as you very well might know, under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, American employers, they are required to accommodate workers' sincerely held religious beliefs, including potentially their religious objections to a vaccine. And here in America, the individual has the right to hold their own religious beliefs, whether they are part of an established religion or not. In fact, there is very little proving that an individual even has to do in regards to their sincere beliefs. The government essentially has to take their word for it something that this lawyer that's speaking to the White House official acknowledges. And it's likely that the, you will have to take as a given the employee's claim. Not always, right? One response that some hospitals have started to give is, 
Well, do you know that Tylenol and Tums at Preparation H, those were all tested using aborted fetal cell lines too. And I expect that employees will then say, well, I didn't know that, but now that you tell me that, I'll stop using those products as well. And so, as you just heard, this lawyer, who is again from the Department of Justice, he's representing the federal government, he has acknowledged the fact that a religious exemption to the vaccine exists. Which is ironic, given the fact that when you look at some of the vaccine mandates that have been springing up across the country, well, some of them have made a deliberate effort to not allow for religious exemptions. One obvious example was the vaccine mandate for healthcare workers here in the state of New York who are not allowed to apply for any type of religious exe exemption. In fact, in justifying this move, Governor Kathy Hochul, she mentioned that even the Pope himself said that the vaccine was okay to take. Here's in fact what she said during a speech when discussing this topic. There are not legitimate religious exemptions because the leaders of all the organized religions have said there's no legitimate reason you shouldn't get a vaccine. And we're going to win that in court in a matter of days. Also in a prior speech on this very same issue, here's what Governor Hochul said as well. To the extent that there's leadership of different religious organizations that have spoken, and they have, I'm not aware of a sanctioned religious exemption from any organized religion. In fact, they're encouraging the opposite. They're encouraging their members. Everybody from the Pope on down is encouraging people to get vaccinated. However, what she just said in that statement, it touches on the very crux of the issue, and it actually brings us right back to what we just heard in that leaked audio recording, which came from the White House. Here in America, it does not matter what any institution or even what the Vatican says. The American individual, meaning you and me, we all have the right to hold our own religious beliefs and our own spiritual convictions. It is quite literally the very first part of the very first amendment, which says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Furthermore, according to Mr. Roger Severino, who is a senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center, he said that the kind of statement that Governor Hochul said in, that, in the statement we just read, and others who have made similar statements as well, they have crossed a line. Basically, his point was that if you tell your boss that you're, let's say, a Catholic and you hold a religious objection to the vaccine, but then your boss turns around and says, hey, well, actually the Pope himself has urged Catholics to get vaccinated, well, that would actually amount to a form of religious discrimination. Here's specifically how he formulated his thoughts. For employers to say you are wrong about your own beliefs is both arrogant and discriminatory because people are entitled to their own religious beliefs, even if they disagree with their own religious leaders. Public institutions should not act like inquisitorial boards quizzing people's religious beliefs and trying to find holes because somebody has a different view of things. If separation of church and state means anything, it means that state institutions don't second guess to try to resolve religious truths. And indeed, according to that newly leaked White House audio recording that we just listened to, it appears that the Department of Justice, i.e. the federal government, has recognized this fact as well, which is that according to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, American employers are indeed required to accommodate workers' sincerely held religious beliefs, including their potential religious objection to the vaccine. Now, if you'd like to listen to that full audio recording for yourself, I'll throw a link to it into the description box below this video so you can listen to it at your own leisure. And all I ask in return is that you take a quick moment to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, which, by the way, it forces the YouTube algorithm to share this video out to potentially thousands of more people who might have never heard about this audio recording, and therefore, letting the truth be known far and wide. Now, since we're on the topic of vaccine mandates, let's discuss what Joe Biden just said yesterday regarding police officers over at the CNN presidential town hall. Oh, sorry. What's this? Well, that's a great question, Roman, and it is today's sponsor, which is an awesome messaging and email service provider called Secure. And it's awesome if you're the type of person that actually cares about their privacy. Because, I mean, it's no big secret that these big tech companies are mining and remining our data all the time. In fact, in the year 2020, it was found that over 155 million Americans, likely including you and me, have suffered some form of data breach. And by the way, that's only what's publicly known. However, what's happened in the past, well, that can stay in the past because with Secure, your data and your messages can remain private. And that's because Secure has all of their data centers located over in Switzerland rather than in the US or in China. And the reason that's so important is that Switzerland has some of the strictest data privacy laws in the entire world, and they are not subject to the Intrusive Cloud Act. And if you want to know what the Cloud Act is, head on over to secure.com and watch their video on the homepage or on the video tutorials page, which is under their support section. Now, the thing that I personally love the most about the Secure app is the privacy aspect of it. They don't mine my data. They don't mine my phone number. They don't mine the phone numbers or data of my friends and family who I chat with. 
But best of all is that if your friends and family don't actually use this use the secure app themselves, it doesn't matter. Because the way that it works is that when you use their secure send email technology, all of your emails and your messages route to Switzerland and then the recipient can reply using their secure reply technology. And so everything remains private no matter what. And the same actually goes for their messaging app as well. And they're always coming up with new features. In fact, the most recent one they told me about, they sent me an email here, was that they're coming up with a new feature called text to chat by invite. So they're an innovative company and they really do care about your privacy. And so what they're doing doesn't work with your existing big tech email account. So check them out. You can head on over to secure.com. I'll throw the link into the description box below. And when you use promo code Roman, you can get 25% off. And the rates are not even that expensive to start with, by the way. It's only $5 for the messenger and $10 for the email and messenger combo. And they even offer a seven day free trial. So head on over to their website. Again, it'll be linked in the description box below. Use promo code Roman to save some money. And now Roman in the studio, back to you. And now let's move on over and talk about vaccine mandates across the entire country. And to start with, last night during a CNN presidential town hall, Joe Biden was asked this question by Anderson Cooper. Should police officers, emergency responders be mandated to get vaccines? And if not, should they be stay at home or let go? Yes and yes. His implication being that police officers as well as first responders who are unwilling to take the vaccine for any reason should be let go. Now you might say, hold on a second, before he was sworn in as president, wasn't Joe Biden actually against these vaccine mandates? And you would actually be correct. During the 2020 presidential campaign, Joe Biden said that he was opposed to vaccine mandates. In fact, not too long ago, just back in December of last year, Joe Biden said this about the vaccine. I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it to be mandatory, but I would do everything in my power, just like I don't think masks have to be mandatory nationwide. I'll do everything in my power as the president of the United States to encourage people to do the right thing. However, things have now obviously changed. And during yesterday's CNN presidential town hall, Joe Biden explained himself this way. One are those who just try to make this a political issue, freedom. I have the freedom to kill you with my COVID. No, I mean, come on, freedom. Number one. Number two, the second one is that, uh, you know, the, the gross misinformation that's out there. Now, when you look into it, it is indeed the case that police departments, fire departments, and paramedic units are getting gutted across the entire country due to the vaccine mandate. And you're likely aware of this fact if you're on social media. I mean, there are a lot of videos like this one right here, which shows dozens of police officers as well as firefighters going over to City Hall in order to turn in their boots after resigning. Now, that particular video, by the way, was from Seattle. However, similar things are happening in other cities across the entire country as well. One great example is the city of Chicago, which, as I'm sure you're aware, is currently facing a wave of crime as well as a giant spike in the number of homicides. However, amidst all this, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, she issued a vaccine mandate for all police officers, which then led to a standoff between her and the Chicago Police Union. What happened was that Mayor Lightfoot's order required that all city workers, of course, including all police officers, had to report their vaccination status by October the 15th. And if they failed to do so, they would be put on non-disciplinary, no pay status, meaning essentially that they would be suspended without pay until they complied. However, the president of the local fraternal order of police, which represents about 11,000 active Chicago police officers, he encouraged his members to not comply with this order. His thinking was that probably at least 50% of the police officers would listen to him, not comply with the order, and be sent home. And if that were to happen, then the city would not be able to function, and Mayor Lori Lightfoot, she would be forced back to the negotiating table. Here's in fact what the president of the Chicago Police Union said in a video. I can guarantee you, the no pay status will never last 30 days. There is no way they are going to be able to sustain a police department workforce at 50% capacity or less for more than seven days without some budging. And he was in fact correct. At the very last minute, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, she budged and she allowed police officers who weren't complying with her directions to still report to work and be paid. They're now battling it out in court where Mayor Lori Lightfoot is actually trying to get an official court order to mandate that everyone be vaccinated. And of course, as you likely already know, this is not only playing out over in Chicago, it's not even playing out only among the police. According to data that we've reviewed here at the Epic Times, there are still hundreds of thousands of American military troops who remain unvaccinated, even as the mandatory vaccine deadline is looming ahead. By the way, this includes over 12,000 unvaccinated Air Force personnel who are facing a deadline within the next week. And if they fail to comply, they of course face severe punishment, including possible court martial, as well as dishonorable discharge. 
And by the way, just as an aside, online, many people are referring to what's happening across the country right now as the great conservative purge from America's institutions. Why? Well, take a look at this data here, which breaks down vaccination status by political affiliation. And as you can see, 92% of Democrats are vaccinated, while only 56% of Republicans are. And so think about that for a moment. There are people in this country right now who say that election laws are racist because when you take it as a whole, black people are more likely to not have an ID card than white people. Therefore, if you require someone to show an ID in order to vote, that would disproportionately disenfranchise black people. However, right now across this country, schools, fire departments, police departments, every branch of the military, big tech firms, large corporations, as well as pretty much every other institution that you can think of, they are all implementing vaccine mandates, which according to the data that we just looked at, will overwhelmingly have the effect of pushing out Republicans and pushing out conservatives from the workforce. Now, again, just to be clear, I'm not saying that that's the intended effect, but just something that I thought was worth mentioning. Now, if you'd like to read more about what's happening over in the city of Chicago, about the hundreds of thousands of unvaccinated military personnel who are at risk of getting fired, as well as the statistics around who is vaccinated and who is not, all that will be found in the description box below this video for you to check out. And once again, if you haven't already, all I ask in return is that you take a quick moment to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now, since you've completed this episode of Facts Matter, I would highly, highly recommend that you go on over to Epic TV and check out a phenomenal episode of American Thought Leaders, where Jan sat down and spoke with Dr. Scott Atlas and together they discussed the ethics of vaccinating children, especially given that the data has shown that children do not significantly spread the virus compared to adults. Here's a trailer for that episode. I am absolutely pro-vaccine, but to me it's unconscionable that a society uses its children as shield for adults. So we're gonna inject our children with an experimental drug that they don't have a significant benefit from to shield ourselves. Today, I sit down with public health policy expert, Dr. Scott Atlas, to discuss the ethics of vaccinating children, the recent COVID surge in Florida, and the reality of natural immunity and how vaccine mandates seem to ignore it. When your antibodies decline after four months, eight months, whatever it is, that does not mean necessarily that your protection is gone. Scott Atlas is the author of the upcoming book, A Plague Upon Our House, my fight at the Trump White House to stop COVID from destroying America. This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Yanya Kalik. If you want to check out that awesome episode, as well as all the other great content over on Epic TV, I'll throw a link to it. It'll be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you click on it. I hope you check it out. I hope you subscribe. And I hope that you join us on this journey of exploring this beautiful, beautiful world through honest journalism that is based in truth and tradition. Now, lastly, if you haven't already, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already in order to get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed while YouTube still allows it. Also, consider hitting that notification bell so you can actually be notified of any new videos as we release them. And then lastly, if you have an Instagram account, consider following me at Epic Times Roman. I publish behind the scenes research as well as spicy memes, and I will continue to do so as long as my account remains active. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.